Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. In this podcast, we discuss mystical works of literature and how they relate to recovery. We hope you enjoy today's podcast episode. Hello, this is Buddy C. Welcome to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. Today we have Amy, Marla, Craig, Carrie, and Lou. Good to have everyone. Happy New Year, in case I forget to tell you guys, that will be tomorrow, I guess, won't it? Tomorrow night, New Year's Eve. Announcements. The Dive of Understanding Facebook page. It's the exact same logo as what's on the podcast. Um, just look us up. We'll, we'll put you in. We'll give you a shout out. We'll give you a nice warm welcome. You can even join the meeting. Like Carrie did today. Right, Carrie. Good to have you, sir. You want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, buddy, Carrie. Um, uh, like I told you, I'm not in recovery, but um, I love listening to y'all talk about the Tao. And when I listen to the podcast, I just want to jump in and say stuff sometimes. But now that I'm actually here, I didn't think I was actually going to be live with you. I thought like I'd be in some audience area or something. So. No, you're amongst us. Or anything. You're, you're right in the middle of things. Yeah, I didn't know I was jumping right in the middle of it. So it's just uh, thrilled to be here. So happy to have you today, sir. Let's see. Let's mention the 9 p.m. Eastern uh, nightly AA meeting. ZoomAAMeetings.com will get you there. Or if you go to the uh, AA directory of online meetings, it's the Fourth Dimensioners is the name of the group. Every night, it's an open discussion meeting. On Saturday nights, we have a speaker meeting, alternate male, female. So we're still going strong. Uh, March 15th will be two years. Wow. We're just going to keep that rolling, keep that rolling. And the great thing about that is we've met people from all over the world in this meeting. And we've got another tomorrow guy's coming to Atlanta that's a regular, or he's in Atlanta. So one of our members put together a little lunch. So we're all, several of us are going to eat lunch tomorrow. And I get to meet someone new that I didn't know from the fourth dimensioners. So, and then I get to see the other folks too. So good stuff. Good stuff. What a community. Today I wanted to talk about um, making plans in, um, you know, a lot of times when you think about the Dow, you think about, um, uh, People equate it to no plans, no, uh, really no uh, forethought as to what's going on. But I don't think it means that. And so how do we stay within the Tao and practice this effortless effort way of living and do that without uh, um, and still set goals and uh, do the things we need to? Uh, in life, how how does that look? Because it is different. Um, and when I was thinking about that, I was also thinking about the fact that if I don't know where I am, how can I set a goal to go somewhere else? You know. So I think for me, the first thing I have to do is be in, in acceptance of what is before I even can look at what what goals I want to set for next year or where what I want to be different in my life, all those things. So I've got tons of uh, text from the Tao Te Ching, but I was thinking about that this morning. I said, gosh, I said, first I've got to accept things for the way they are. Because if I don't start there, how can I how can I go somewhere else, you know? If I think I'm here when I'm really not, I mean, that's just, you know, screw the whole thing. So I was thinking about that first and then where to proceed. But who would like to open us up with any thoughts or verses or any of that? Anyone have anything? I thought about this kind of a lot because I think I was the one last week that brought up um, New Year's resolutions. And I, I, you know, I looked around a little bit in the Tao, and the you know I I came to the conclusion really that the the whole point of 
resolutions is to basically desire for something to be different, whether it be better or worse, whatever. And the Tao, you know, we're not supposed to desire anything to be different. We're supposed to be, like you said, in acceptance of the way things are. Therefore, I don't need any resolutions. But now you're talking about goals. And I think as a householder, you know, somebody who does have an ego and will never get rid of it, there has to be a, a, a way to live in the world. And there's, there's the reality of living in the world. We have to make money to eat and have a roof overhead. So those, go, those are goals that I have, is I need to survive, accept my circumstances, but survive in this world. Thank you, Mara. Thank you. Who else? Let's just jump right in. <laughs> Come on. Absolutely. So verse 57 of Star. To rule the state, have a known plan. To win a battle, have an unknown plan. To gain the universe, have no plan at all. Let the universe itself reveal to you its splendor. How do I know this should be so? Because of this. The more restrictions, the more poverty. The more weapons, the more fear in the land. The more cleverness, the more strange events, the more laws, the more lawbreakers. Thus, the sages say, act with a pure heart and the people will be transformed. Love your own life and the people will be uplifted. Give without conditions and the people will prosper. Want nothing and the people will find everything. So I think I had several, but that was my specifically on uh, my view of resolutions and goals and stuff, especially since I'm in, especially since being in recovery, it's so much about staying in the moment as you're talking about. And what for me is staying in the moment is that acceptance, right? To gain the universe, have no plans at all. Let the universe itself reveal to you its splendor. So for me, the more I try to fix, manage, and control the outcomes of things, the more I'm limiting God or the doubt or the universe from doing and being its maximum potential, which in turn allows me to be of my maximum potential. Say that again, please. What you just said. (laughs) Which part? (laughs) The, The last sentence what I have to do, what you, you said it in a good way. And I caught, I didn't. So, so when, I don't know, I, I, sometimes I just can't get it back, buddy, but I'll try. Um, so for me, it's, if I'm trying to fix, manage and control, I'm not allowing the universe or God to be its maximum potential which in turn allows me to be my maximum potential. That's what I was talking about. That was okay. Okay. It's managing control. Yeah. Yeah. Then that, this whole train of thought took me back to before AA, I judged myself by my intentions while the world was judging me by my actions. So if I intend on doing this, 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 Okay, that's great. Those are just intentions. But what are my actions? Are my actions showing? Are they matching my intentions? Today, it's more aligned. Yes, my actions and my intentions are more aligned because I saw it through prayer and meditation. I seek through prayer and meditation. I try to improve the conscious contact. I try to live by principles. I try to live by the Tao and to just stay in the moment in acceptance of whatever is, is. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Who's next? Just what Amy was saying, that reminds me of the seventh, the seventh verse. The Tao never stops. This is the Ron Hogan. The Tao never stops. Why? Because it isn't trying to accomplish anything. The masters hang back. That's why they're ahead of the game. They don't hang on to things. That's how they manage to keep them. 
They don't worry about what they can't control. That's why they're always satisfied. <laughs> Kerry's shaking his head. <laughs> yeah, no, it's just, it's just hitting home with some things. It's pretty, it's in my own life. So I'm not sure about Craig, sorry. I, no, carry on. I mean, just that whole amount of accomplishing something. My, my whole career has, you know, I've never known what I wanted to do or what my purpose was. Um, but I have a really successful career and, and I enjoy my job and I've always enjoyed where I'm at. And I've done several different stuff from finance to customer service to everything. And I've been successful in all of them, but it wasn't like I was trying to go anywhere in particular. I could never answer that question, but maybe that was more aligned with the balance of thoughts. Maybe. See, and I think if we look behind desire, and look at what's behind why we want what we want. Is it, you know, page 84 in the big book talks about what to do when uh, selfishness, dishonesty, uh, uh, resentment, and fear pop up, okay? That are my desires coming from selfishness or my desires coming from dishonesty or resentment? And ultimately, are my desires coming from a fear? That's the ultimate. Really, that's the real question. Is why do I want this to be different? What is it about it that I'm, am I unhappy with this? Or do, or is this a change I want to make because I have some other reason? What, you know, what is my thinking here? What is my motivation? I think is a real question to be asking. You know, back to if I'm angry for me, okay, what is it I'm afraid of? <laughs> really, if I just want to cut to the chase, why is it that, you know, what what fears behind this? So if my desires are motivated, you know, and a lot of my desires, I think personally before recovery, I don't know many of my desires that were not motivated by fear ultimately when I think about it. You're kind of half frowning, Marla. Is that a? No, no, no. I was, I was just thinking, just to simplify in my head, a Mercedes, like to desire something like a Mercedes. You know what? I lost my train of thought, but it's about desiring. I, I, I'm sorry. I lost my train of thought. I'm having a. If I wanted a Mercedes. It would be because I was afraid someone would not think that I was as successful. Yes. Somebody, the, if I don't have what they have, they're not going to like me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's, that's what I'm talking fear. about. That's fair. That's like, it, yeah. yeah, total fair. So if I'm not like everybody else and working my ass off type A personality bullshit, um, I'm, I'm not like everyone else. Or from the Al-Anon perspective, if they're unhappy with me or what, uh, I guess, what would it be, Lou, in that regard, as far as fear popping up in your desires? How would you put that in a sentence? Well, it would be about, um, I'm not good if other people aren't liking me. Yes, yes. It would be that um, the fault is mine. If someone's drinking, I mean, and from the Al-Anon perspective, you know, from coming into recovery from um, through Al-Anon, um, there's a lot of self guilt of not pulling the right strings to make the drinker stop, <laughs> and so there the fear is um, the fear is primarily the fear that I'm not good enough to make them stop drinking. Mm. Mm. They don't love me enough. They don't love me enough. Um, I haven't I haven't found the way to explain it to them yet. Um, you know, um, if only, if only I hadn't done my wife, when, when we were, I remember in one of the sessions, um, one of the meetings, she said, um, I used to think if I'd only taken my son, um, ice fishing, this was before I was, I was in the picture. I'm the stepdad. Um, before, if I had only taken my son ice fishing when he wanted to, then he would have, um, not, become a drinker <laughs> you know she had to go back and what what i was a um a failed mother she felt like a failed mother because her son drank and took that responsibility and mantle on herself um 
so that's the fear, I guess, is the fear of not measuring up. Mm-hmm. And it's, of course, it's different for everybody. Mine was, mine was that the fear of, um, the fear that I didn't measure up, that I wasn't a good enough person, not a good enough dad, um, that even with my training in the field, I couldn't, you know, make the, make the, make his, make the, him change the way I wanted him to change. And that was back on me. I remember one of my school reports when I was about seven or eight, that the head teacher wrote, if only Craig could be like his brother, Andrew, he'd be fine. <laughs> oh, so that's what happened. It's kind that's, of abusive. It's all her fault. It's, it is. It's, see, I'm, I'm completely exonerated now. It's, it was nothing to do with me, you know. But <laughs> it was. I, I can now. I, I can now shock over all responsibility. I was the head teacher when I was eight. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, I see what you mean. Luke. It's just that that not good enough and having to strive constantly to try and be good or, or even better. That's the issue that I have with the, the with the resolution thing. What happens when I've 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 achieved what I want to do? What's going to be next? Am I really going to be satisfied with that? Am I going to be able to sit with that and then think, right, finally I'm good enough? I'll be thinking, well, maybe there's something else that I could be doing. You know, maybe I shouldn't be sitting on my backside and just maybe I shouldn't be resting on my laurels because we start to get complacent. You know, I, I always I always think of that, the the part in the, the big book where it talks about you know we're not cured of alcoholism. It's easy to rest in your laurels and just slip back into your old habits and your old ways. I think once I've actually achieved that thing, there's two things I can do. Strive to do more or regress back to back to doing nothing. Yeah, I'm in two minds about it. Um, I'm with Marla in terms of, you know, you want to put the, you want to be resolute in putting your deodorant on in the morning so you don't scare people away. I mean, there are certain things, goals and things, you know, I've, uh, because of the work I've done, I've done goals with individuals and I've done goals with organizations and strategic plans and all that kind of stuff. Um, and what and it kind of goes back, I think, to what Amy was talking about in term for me in terms of intentions and actions, because you can you can write all these beautiful wordsmith goals. Um, but it has to do with aligning your action with that. And I don't. To me, it's more like like nature. There's a ripeness to to um, change, whether it's me losing weight or or whatever. Um, it doesn't happen because it's January one, and I put it down on a list of things that I want to want to make better. It's one of the circumstances, my internal circumstances, and and you know the the world, the lines, and I'm in the right place, and and the right kinds of things happen, and I take the right action with them. That's not a planned thing. It may be resolution in terms of being steadfast and what what Buddy was saying about um, what's the what's the real desire, being steadfast towards love or joy or harmony. Um, but to me, it's it's more about a, a ripeness to things than it is about I'm going to by God, I'm going to really do it this time. See, that's the problem, Lou, I think, is that push is our um, uh, we're buying into uh, the expectation where where this has got to happen and we're going to make it happen. And as long as our peace and joy is tied into that external, it's another external again. Mm-hmm. We can accomplish this, you know, then we'll be happy. You know, this is from verse nine. This is uh, the way I saw the last stanza or the last two to truly accomplish your goal, complete your task and step out of the way and letting go you make room for the Tao to use your efforts to their fullest potential. So I was thinking about that. I said, yeah, I said, that's the whole point. I do my part. I step out of the way. I, and if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it does. I don't, uh, I don't stress over anything more. I've already done my part. It, it goes back to the serenity prayer of identifying the things I can change and the things I can't. You know, because at that point, there's nothing else for me to change. 
I've already done my part, so I have to let it go. And when I do that and get out of the way, then I think that's when the fullest potential can happen with whatever it is. Yeah, I agree. I, Anything else? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, um, so the, the whole desire thing, <laughs> and and I get I, I get what you're saying about fear. What is the fear behind it? At the same time, I think that if my motives are pure, I can have some very simplistic desires without them being motivated by a fear. A few years ago, I had never in my entire life bought a brand new car all on my own, paid for it, got exactly what I wanted. You know, it was always, I got what I had, what I could afford or what was available, whatever, right? So I absolutely intentionally went to the dealership knowing exactly what I wanted. I had already taken the action necessary. I continued to take the action necessary to pay for it and be a, a real adult. Like I was a real adult, <laughs> adulting and being responsible. And really it was, my motive was not to show off. It was not, I, I can honestly sit here and tell you, it was not a fear of not being good enough. It was purely motivate I was purely motivated motivated by I want to do something nice for myself just because I have accomplished and I'm at a place where I can so yeah there's nothing wrong with that Amy there's nothing wrong with having a desire for something okay that's the, I think that's the whole point is that it's not about having no desires. Wow. It's about why do I desire this? Motives. What's behind my desire? Yeah. Exactly. You know, okay. now, but by, by the same token, just because it appears to be a good desire, like it's going to help a lot of people, or that doesn't mean that it's coming from the right place either. Oh, I get that too, because I can, I certainly can hide a bad motive underneath a good one. I can make it look all shiny and bright and attractive on the outside. And buddy, I'm going to stab you in the back on, you know? Yeah. I, don't know how many, I don't know how many times I went to Buddy and says, hey, Buddy, I've, I've, I've had this great idea. I'm going to do this. And he shot it down in flames. He's like, <laughs> would you want to do something just stupid like that? I don't say that. Now, I don't use stupid, but. <laughs> Maybe you hear that between the lines, but I wouldn't tell you your idea is stupid. I would. Uh, He's thinking it. You sure about that? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Amy, that's good because that's exactly what I realized was this is not about having no desires. I think when well, we have intuitive knowledge of our, we have to step in a direction on the path and we have desires for things. Uh, I think we just need to look at why we have those desires yeah. and what that's really about. And I can't do that by myself. I do, I do that through working the steps, discussing things with other people, uh, talking to my sponsor about things, just really learning to be transparent about my life more then those ideas I have that get wrapped up in my head don't lead me astray as often that's the big difference in recovery for me is uh, other people know what I'm thinking now when no one knew what I was thinking before I was thinking about the story from Chauncey that we've talked about and I use this story when I worked the third step with someone now this is part of my third step work it's the story, How Deep is Dow, page 73 in the Chonks of Book. I'll read it real quick. Uh, my master said, Dow, how deep, how still its hiding place. Dow, how pure. Without this stillness, metal would not ring. Stone, when struck, would give no answer. 
the power of sound is in the metal and Tao in all things. When they clash, they ring with Tao and are silent again. Who is there now to tell all things their place? The king of life goes his way free, inactive, unknown. I think that free, inactive, and unknown would be free of selfishness and dishonesty, free of fear, free of fear. He would blush to be in business. He keeps his deep roots down in the origin, down in the spring. His knowledge is enfolded in spirit and grows great, great, opens a great heart, a world's refuge. Without forethought, he comes out in majesty. Without plan, he goes his way and all things follow him. This is the kingly man who rides above life. This one sees in the dark. Here's where there is no sound. You can't do that if you're in fear, right? In the deep dark, he alone sees light. In soundlessness, he alone perceives music. He can go down into the lowest of low places and find people. He can stand in the highest of high places and see meaning. He is in contact with all being. That which is not goes his way. Now, this is the part that I wanted to get to here. That which moves is what he stands on. Great is small for him, long is short for him, and all his distances are near. That which moves is what he stands on. I think I saw another translation of that, that he stands on what is already moving. Would that also be um, change? Like he, he's aware everything changes, yet everything remains the same? Yeah, Marla, and it's the fact that he's aware of what's going on. He, she is aware of what's going on. So it's not as if we have to make things move or we have to push in a direction. We just become aware enough to see what's happening and go in that, go where, stand on what's already moving, you know? So when we're setting these goals or these plans, uh, the first thing I want to look at is, okay, what is already happening so I don't have to, you know, push and make something happen, you know? Uh, it's like in business, you know, I, I don't want to for, I can't force something to happen. That is so good. I see so many people in business try to do that. They have this idea and they're going to push, push, push to make this happen. Well, why don't you spend some time noticing what is working and see if there's something you can do in that direction, you know, that you don't have to uh, have such a push and force, um, and I've talked before, you know, when I was a child, I went by, I rode by a house and it was vacant. And all of a sudden I thought inside, someone should take that house up and fix it, fix it up and sell it. I'd never thought about real estate before. This was, I was maybe 12, 11, 12, riding in the back of my mother's red B210 station wagon. If anybody remembers those, yeah. And I saw the house, I can take you to the very house right now because I remember it. And it was just that clear from that point on, I wanted to do something real estate related with my life. So the first thing I knew nothing about houses, I said, well, I'm going to buy rental houses whenever I can. First thing I did when I was able was started buying rental houses. And real estate's been a part of my life since, gosh, since I've been an adult. But it's not as if, I mean, I had to do something. I set some goals, but but I looked at what was already there, you know, and I think that's part of this too. You know, all we can really do with this process is kind of describe it. You know, our words are so inadequate with this, but just kind of describe how it's, how it works. You know, and the first thing I would do is, is look and say, okay, what is it? Am I aware enough to see what's already moving in a direction and can I move with it? When I'm setting my goals, my desires to, for whatever, maybe I want to achieve in, you know, 2022, what are those things and why do I want to achieve that? What do I want to, you know, and it's, it's a loose thing that we hold, you know, it's not, we can't, we can't have these things written in stone. So uh, seeing where that's from is such a big part of this. I think that's probably why so many resolutions fail so quickly. Sure. It's because people are pushing, people aren't, they're not really aware of what's going on. They're just, they're just kind of like hyper-focused on that one outcome. 
And when it doesn't seem to be going the way that we want it to go, then rather than changing the behaviours, we change the goal. <laughs> yeah, it's like the last 20 years of trying to be damned. This time I'm really going to do it. <laughs> yeah. But if, <laughs> verse 64, I, I found the translation of 64. I, I don't know who it's, I don't know who wrote it. Um, but part of it says rushing into action, you fail, which is pretty much what Buddy was saying. Like you're, you're pushing things. So rushing into action, you fail. Trying to grasp things, you lose them. Forcing a project to completion, you ruin what was almost right. Therefore, the master takes action by letting things take their course. He remains as calm at the end as at the beginning. He has nothing, thus, thus he has nothing to lose. What he desires is non-desire. What he learns is to unlearn. He simply reminds people of who they have always been. He cares about nothing but the Tao, thus he can care for all things. That doesn't mean he has no care. That means he has no selfish, fearful That's right. There's, 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 there's none of the selfish motivations that we generally right. have. They're selfish desires. And to me, the, the nature, nature is like a good example of Taoist principles or natural kind of nature and how it works. And, I, and it seems to me that sometimes you find those people that are close to it that have figured out um, how to how to live in the world kind of in the right way. So, you know, in the early days, those um, fishermen that could use the sails and catch the wind, they didn't create the wind. They didn't um, manufacture it or invent it, but they learned how to use it, use that power um, and, to, and to go with it and to have it take them where they needed to go. And like I talked about before with ripeness with farmers, they knew the right time to plant and they knew the right time to harvest. They didn't dig it up to see if it was halfway, you know, <laughs> is it halfway grown? No, dig it up and look, and then I'll put it back under there and bury it again. Um, and I think that's because, they, they're like masters in their own way, masters of their art, whether it's farming or fishing or whatever it is, but it's the catching your sail to the wind with the dow being the wind. Like Buddy was talking about not forcing it, but moving with it. That That's the easiest way for me to understand some of these things is to use kind of a naturalistic perspective on it. That's good, it's Lou. Thank you, sir. Like the water also, the water analogy where you just go with the flow of the water. Water seeks its own levels. It, it bypasses all the obstacles. It goes around them and keeps going. And just like the wind, you just got to let it go. This is the 63rd. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, sorry. Just, just what Mala was saying. Flow with whatever may happen and let your mind be free. Stay centered by accepting whatever you are doing. This is the ultimate. I don't know who said that. It was just a quote that I found on Pinterest, but that's not quite. <laughs> finding the Tao on Pinterest. All right. Just finding the 63rd verse is one I wrote down too. Yeah. Uh, which which translation did you like, Amy? Hogan, of course. <laughs> I like the uh, Mitchell. So you go ahead. You want to read it? Yeah. So yeah. I'll read Hogan's. Mitchell's is too short. I, got, I want longer. <laughs> Keep still. Don't work so hard. Learn to appreciate everyday life. Pay attention to details. Start small and work your way up. When people give you trouble, let it slide. Break everything down to its essentials. Get the job done before it becomes a chore. With the right preparation, difficult tasks can be completed with ease. Every major project consists of simple steps. The masters don't take on more than they can handle, which is why they can do just about anything. Don't promise more than you can deliver and don't underestimate the task. You'll only make things harder for yourself. The masters are always aware of the difficulties involved, which is why they never have to deal with them. Hmm. Do you want me to read Mitchell's too? I'll, I'll read it. Okay. Uh, act without doing. Work without effort it didn't say you didn't work it said you work without effort think of the small as large and the few as many confront the difficult while it is still easy accomplish the great task by a series of small acts and this is the part i really like here 
The master never reaches for the great, thus she achieves greatness. Now, this is the one. When she runs into a difficulty, she stops and gives herself to it. She doesn't cling to her own comfort, thus problems are no problem for her. When she runs into a difficulty, she stops and gives herself to the difficulty. Of course, you plan on the worst case. And when there's a difficulty, she stops and gives herself to it. In other words, she surrenders. She surrenders. So how does that work in real life? Well, whatever the issue is that you find uh, that, that this isn't working the way you thought it should, what I do is I work the steps on it. I am powerless over whatever this is. And I just sit with it. And I just surrender to whatever, just like I surrender to alcohol. No different. And I sit with it. Just sit. Sometimes it takes a minute, sometimes 10 hours. Sometimes it takes weeks of daily doing this until one day I realize that whatever the difficulty is, is handled and I'm no longer all tore up about whatever it is that, that the issue is. But I thought that was really good. That, listen to this. She doesn't avoid the difficulty. She runs into the difficulty. The opposite of what I want to do. <laughs> I want to avoid it. You know, it's like that phone call I need to make and I wait and make it at the very last minute because I don't want to, I don't want to make that call, even though I need to. Why it's like I just the make it's like the call you get at five. It's, the, it's like the call you get at five to five at night because the guy's just he's put it off all day because he doesn't want to phone you. Exactly, Craig. But it's interesting. Instead of avoiding the difficulty, she runs into the difficulty. It's it's, mm. it's like it's like dealing with dealing with the problem before it becomes dealing with the issue before it becomes a problem. And then when it is a problem, you go ahead and deal with it. Yeah. Well, here, let me read this. This 73rd verse, all is as it should be. All of the plans of men are feeble when compared with the Tao. The Tao does not strive or compete, yet it excels. The Tao does not ask, yet it is supplied with all it needs. Slow, patient, calm, relaxed, unhurried, always at ease, yet able to accomplish any task. The mesh of heaven's net is large, yet nothing slips through. I think the other thing I really kind of wanted to mention was for me, and it goes back to fear. One of the reasons I've never historically, and I'm not going to start now, set like a, a New Year's resolution or a goal or some freaking made up shit that I think I'm going to do because somebody else decided it was a good idea. Because of that fear of failure, what if I set some unrealistic expectation on myself and then I don't achieve it? And then what? I'm left with the disappointment and the resentment towards myself, the failure, right? Which my fear of failure is a big one. So why, why even bother, right? Just to make a new year's resolution. <laughs> Why well, set myself up? <laughs> Just do. And, and you know about the whole making a plan thing. I mean, like I, I get that. And, and one of the verses I read was like the best, the traveler doesn't plan or something. And I'm like, well, I'm going to call bullshit on that one because I'm the chick with the itinerary when I travel <laughs> to maximize my time. But like, I still, you know, I don't, I, because my brain will literally take it to be don't have a plan, just go. And I can't, I can't really do that either because there's got to be some sort of organization, some sort of method, met, method, oh my God, I can't, methodology. Yeah. Um, because we, we're householders. We live in a world, in a community. We can't just be free, tra free roaming travelers. I mean, Maybe when I was 18, but as an adult, there were responsibilities that had to be taken care of. Rent, 
food, et cetera. And if we stay in the moment doing that, though, won't, won't those things take care of the, I mean, we will be taking care of those things. If we do what is right in front, if I do what is right in front of me to be done, right? Like my job, I got to, I get to do my job. It's right in front of me to be done. And if I'm in the moment doing my job, then I will get a paycheck and I will get to put food on the table and I will get to, you know what I mean? So I don't know. Amy, that's uh, the 27th verse, I believe. Let's talk about that for a second, because that's that's a good <laughs> contradiction that we see a lot, you know, of well, if you're a good traveler, this is a good traveler has no fixed plans, right? Yeah. yeah. And is not intent upon arriving. Remember, this was also written long ago when they didn't have cars and airplanes. Yeah, but that doesn't mean they didn't make plans, though. They said, I'm going to be at this place on this day. I don't think it's talking about that. I don't think it's talking about not having a plan. Oh, you're talk, it's talking about like free roaming in, in your. No, I think it's talking about how we get so invested in the outcome of our plans. Yeah. That yeah. we get so tweaked about things that we can't even enjoy the journey because we're we're tied up of getting here by this day at this time and this you know all those things i think that's more of and a lot of the translations don't take it as being a good traveler with fixed plans they translate it a lot of different ways um so i think it can mean something totally different than that yeah i think you're right it means something way bigger than what i'm thinking uh a knower of the truth yeah. travels without leaving a trace. That's one translation of that. Speaks without causing harm. Gives without keeping an account. Rather than just a good traveler has no fixed plan. You know, you're like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense to me. I'm like Amy. Yeah, that that's that that's impractical. But I have found nothing here that was not practical in Dao Te Ching. I'm telling you, this applies to us just like it applied to them. Uh, the door he shuts, though having no lock, cannot be opened. The knot he ties, though using no cord, cannot be undone. That's the that's so much different than what we see here from these other guys. A good artist lets his intuition lead him wherever it wants. So it's like being led by our intuition, not having this plan that we have to achieve. Keeps his mind open to what is. That's so much, that's so different. But isn't that the essence of desire really is so that, um, so that we can just stay open minded is so much of what this is about. I want to do one more thing from my stuff really fast. I went through a lot of different verses and just highlighted just a little sentence, kind of like we're describing what this looks like you know, to have, to set goals or have desires um, and some things to avoid and things we want to do. Out of verse nine, I saw that if this is about people pleasing, it's going to be a problem. And the way I know that I am have the wrong motive is because whatever I'm wanting to desire, once I desire it, it doesn't bring me the satisfaction I thought it should. When that happens, I may, maybe I need to look at why I was desiring it in the first place. Like when I achieve a certain thing and I'm like, that doesn't mm -hmm. feel as bad as I thought it would feel. <laughs> you know, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, that, that makes sense. Let's see. Then uh, hold our plans loosely. That's from the 29th. From the 30th, never use violence to achieve our goals. Never use violence. Good plans use no schemes. So a lot of the same. Uh, from verse 57, when we set rigid goals, we block intuitive guidance or intuitive knowledge. Um, we talked about giving ourselves to whatever the issue is. Uh, we, we take care of little problems while they're small. By pursuing this from 64, by pursuing our goals too relentlessly, 
uh, we let them slip away. So they slip away because we're too uh, pursuing too hard. Um, I got to remember that my plans from 73, my plans in my head, plans I come up with are feeble compared to the intuitive plans of the Dow. I like that one too, Marla. That's a good one. I like it. Um, Very amazing ourselves. Yeah. My thinking is so lacking with this, you know? And it's just so good. I don't have to figure these things out anymore. How freeing is that? Yeah. What else, guys? Anything else? I want to recommend a book that I think Lou recommended. Did you, Lou, didn't you talk about the Lost Sutras of Jesus? Was that you? Yeah, that was one I stumbled across. Very good. Thank you. I put a link actually on buddyc.org to buy this. If anybody wants to buy it, can easily find it. Very, 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 very good. This is about Christianity actually coming into China and, and that whole process and some of the actual teachings that uh, the sutras from the Christian teaching, but it is it does not sound like the Christian teaching that we have today. It's a much more Taoist in thought. Uh, uh, for example, here's one where it is only nothing that can give rise to something. That's part of the Christian text, you know, because it's very Taoist, very uh, those who seek peace and joy. Uh, what it says is you don't seek peace and joy. You just do the right things and peace and joy finds you like the birds and the animals finding the forest. The forest doesn't have to create those. If you, if you have the forest, they're going to show up. That type of very good. Let me read this one. This is about desire. I wanted to read this. This is from page 81 in the Law Sutras of Jesus. Uh, Ray Riegert and Thomas Moore. There's four laws in this. The first one is no desire. Your heart seeks one thing after another, creating a multitude of problems. You must not allow them to flare up. Desires are like the roots of plants. Since they are buried deep below the earth, you can't see them and don't know they are damaged until uh, the buds of the plant begin to wither and die. Desire in the human heart can't be recognized from the outside either. Desire can sap wholesome energy from the four limbs and the body's openings, turning it into unwholesome activity. This cuts, all, cuts us off from the roots of peace and joy. That is why you must practice the law of no desire. Yeah. And then they go into the other ones, uh, the law of no action the law of no virtue, and the law of no truth. This is a very good book. I'd highly recommend it. But yeah, Amy, it's you were talking about desire, and I, for a long time, I was stuck on that too. How, how does this work? I want things. Is that wrong that I want something? No, it's not wrong, but I have to look at why I want it. That's the whole point. Well, yeah, actually, I usually don't do homework, but I heard what you were talking about today, and I'm not sure if I thought I was going to be talking or not. Maybe secretly I wanted to, but uh, I, <laughs> I wouldn't have done that, I guess. But um, so just cut me off if I'm talking too long. But I was looking at, of course, chapter one, you know, not to desire. So I thought, well, that means that we shouldn't be planning or have goals. And I was kind of stuck there. And then I was taking a shower this morning and uh, a song by John Denver came on which I think he's part of Dallas. Um, it was called Welcome to My Morning. And, um, and he, it starts out like, welcome to my day, welcome to my morning. I made it perfect. I, I made it just for you. I think I made it perfect. And um, I took that as him saying, like, that's God saying, um, I made this day for you. And um and, but, and, and I really liked it too, but I made it for you. And I, I just, I kind of started thinking that, that maybe that's what the goal need to be aligned with. It's something that, 
the Tao or God would want to have a goal to do. And I took it a little bit further to chapter 67, I think it's 67, where he talks about the three treasures, um, compassion, modesty, and moderation. And I thought that, you know, achieving things was not listed as one of the great treasures there. Uh, but maybe if you aligned what you're trying to do in a godly way with with your goals and what you're trying to achieve, that maybe you're trying to do it not for you, but for somebody else, that that you'll maybe more likely achieve it because you're trying to do something for them perfectly. Uh, but then when you said about people pleasing, then it's like, well, I kind of threw that out of the way. So I don't know where else that goes from there. <laughs> I thought about that it might be good to align with those three things. So, for example, like if you're aligned with um, uh, moderation and you want to put a, you want, you have a goal to do a better budget this year in order to uh, spend, you know, get out of debt or whatever, that maybe you could align that with giving more money to uh, some worthy cause or something. Thank you, Carrie. That's good. You, you know, and this is something I wanted to to mention when I'm, if I can sit and be still, this comes out of my meditation practice more than anything, is some desire will come up like, hmm, I want to do whatever, not based on something external, but from within. And with time, you start noticing that if, if this desire I have is because I'm competing with someone or uh, oh, they look like they're happy, so let me do what they're doing. You know, <laughs> you know all that type of thing. Or is that desire coming from within? You know, and when we start following those desires that come up from our intuitive knowing, if we can be still enough, long enough to start noticing those things, then those are the desires to pursue. Like when I started meditating, I thought, hmm, I think I need to start meditating. The very next week, I met with a sponsor who said, you know, I think I'm going to start meditating. I found a really good podcast about meditation. I said, really? He said, yeah. I said, okay. Which, and then we started pursuing. I think that's the way desire is supposed to work in our life. But that takes a commitment of stillness. That takes a commitment of listening and noticing. Yeah, yeah the synchronicity. Thank you, Amy. Yeah, yeah. Just like this morning, we're getting together tomorrow, and I actually sat down, and I looked at the the uh, clock to see what time it was. I said, okay, I can go ahead and text everyone. It's late enough. I sat down and did something. I said, I need to text them, and I looked, and Amy was texting about tomorrow. I'm like, that's just freaky when that happens, you know, when that synchronicity that starts happening in life, and I'm uh, and we start seeing it in other things that are more important than that, but I think it's... You know, the other part of that too, Carrie, from what you were talking about is that if we've lost our uh, uh, expectations about what's happening, it's not going to matter if it happens or not. You know, whatever the goal is that we set, we we really just lose our, uh, it doesn't mean we don't do the work. There's an aspect of our grasping and holding on to things that I think prevent those things from starting to happen in our life too. Yeah, thank you. Actually, the only verse I printed out that I did not read was the three treasures. So I printed it out because I wanted to, I, I thought it was all about those two. Thank you. Well, buddy, I, the way we started this before everybody came on was we were talking about dating and that if, if it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. We're both really good with it. I think that's where we begin. You know, it's like whatever the universe should bring for either one of them, for us, you know, and to be good with it either way. Is that not the attitude to have in everything though? Fuck yeah. You know? Try to. You know, I, I know what groceries I need. I write a list when I run out of groceries. So, you know, I have my list to go by. So that's kind of, that's a planning, but I don't get upset and cuss the manager out if they don't have something I want, you know, Karen, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so that's the kind of thing you know. We it's in our expectations. I do believe. No shit. Yeah, for real. Anything else, guys? 
So what's everybody's resolutions for next year? We never got to <laughs> I resolve not to have any. I have one or two. I've got a new business I'm starting and I'm just working on working on that, getting there with it, you know, but we'll just see what happens. I, it's not I mean, I hope to make money, but I had this idea and I want to pursue the idea through. So it's really more of that. And I need to do something, I think. So I need to start working at something. So we'll see how it turns out. That's the extent of my goals, Craig. How about you? What's your goals for this year, Craig? Or upcoming year? Um, I think it's really to remain consistent in what I'm doing. I think not to... Not not to push any expectations, and actually, Rob, um, Rob that's been on been on this a few times. I, I work with Rob, and he always talks about what is what the difference between his expectations and the difference between his intentions. What am I expecting out of this situation, rather than you know what am I intending to do through this? So I think just shifting my perspective onto more of a and intentions and plain rather than and expectations. Uh, and I, I think it goes back to what we were talking about last week as well. Amy, you, just if, if I have less expectations, I think I'm going to have less disappointment in my life. I think if I can just take things as they come, and I know it's incredibly difficult just to accept things for how they are, and I don't know how many times we see the serenity prayer in different formats on a daily basis, but I think really getting, getting my head around that and just, you know, acting without expectations as well. Um, Carrie, it was so nice for you to join us today. Yeah. Yes, thank well, you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you. you. Buddy, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll Happy see you all New later. Year. Happy New Year, Amy. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Amy. Yeah, good to have you, Carrie. Thanks for, thanks for showing today. You're welcome back anytime. All right. Yeah, thank you. It was fun. I, uh, I don't know if I'll have to, if I can attend next time because it, I've gotten used to going on walks and listening to the Yes, it was a totally different experience being live. Thank you for doing that. For oh, yeah. 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 We we always uh you know, we invite all kinds of folks to come on, but they uh like I've got one guy that has been studying the Dow a long time. I said, come he said, I couldn't do that. I said, why not? I said, you'd be great. He said, Oh, I might, you know, and he was just nervous about it, you know. And I was like, And you can't talk to anybody else about it a lot of times because they go <laughs> crazy. So <laughs> But uh, well, good to have you, sir. Yeah, so, thank you. Appreciate it. Happy if there's nothing else, guys, we will see y'all next week. Have a happy new year. Happy new year. Happy new year. Hello, this is Buddy C. I wanted to make you aware of several recovery-related resources that I've posted in the episode description. These resources include a list of recovery podcasts, a free sober meditation app, daily recovery email, shared Google recovery calendars, Hope you put some of these resources to use and have a great week. Thank you for listening to the Tao of Our Understanding Recovery Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it with your friends in recovery.